Hey folks, this is Tracy with Scrappy's Rustics. As promised, here is the edited video on how to use masks with your IOD stamps. We are going to use the Seashore two-part stamp and the Retro Alphabet two-part stamp. I chose these because the seashells have a lot of details and the retro letters are large. Here we have acetate. If you're gonna become a stamper, I really suggest you pick up two of the thin mounts. I call it acetate, but they're called thin mounts. You leave one in its full size for if you need to use paint or ink on your brayer and the other you can cut to size to pick up your stamps and you'll see as we go through this video. Right there, your package, most of the IOD stamps come with masks and it'll look like that. They're clear. Um, I didn't open that one uh, because I already have them on the side. So I have all my seashore stamps in a bag and then I have my retro in a bag as well. There is another how-to video um, on how to condition your stamp when you first get it, and that shows you how to prepare your masks as well. Um, it's a really great trick in there on how to stamp your masks so you don't lose them. Uh, here's all the inks that we carry are for IOD. Um, they come in a bottle and you have to order a empty stamp pad. And um, you just fill your ink pad up as you need it. So this is just a piece of cardboard. We're just messing around here because I just want to show you just the basics, really no design here. We're just how to layer stamps with them on, without being all muddled together by using your masks. Now, I believe these are four inch letters, so they're pretty big, they're three or four. Um, if you haven't peeled your stamp off of the backing for the first time, it, sometimes they're really tough. Don't be afraid, you're not gonna hurt them. They're extremely durable. Um, and they can take a beating. They just do not like heat. They don't like the dishwasher and they don't like a hot car because they will melt and distort and then you'd be mad. So that black just came off of the uh, sheathing from the stamp uh, acetate there. So what I'm doing is just lining up our words and the reason to have a thin mount is definitely for wording. There's um, lines going both ways, there's arches, there's all the things. It's really hard to stamp letters one after another um, and get them even. So this is a great way to do that. It looks like my D got stuck to one of the pieces of acetate there or thin mount. So the easiest way to do any type of stamping, uh, lettering stamping is to line them up exactly how you want them. Get yourself a piece of, a piece of thin mount and put it right over it and you can use the lines to get it straight and help you do that. You wanna make sure though that your stamps and your thin mount are free they're not wet they won't stick when they're wet and if they have like a lot of grit or whatever you can just i just put mine in the sink with warm water and wash them with soap and water and let them dry so just make sure they're debris free um because the last thing you want to do is you know stamp everything up and then flip it over and your your stamp falls off onto your surface then you'd be mad so we're just using iod black ink i'm going both ways you always want to stamp or ink your stamps up away from your surface just in case I don't have an exactly steady hand, so somehow I, t I, I always end up with ink where I don't want it. Um, so it's just a good idea to get in the habit of doing uh, inking your stamps away from your surface. So once you put it down, that's it, commit. You're gonna anchor with one hand and then you're literally gonna go over every square inch of the stamp with your fingers, your hand, however you wanna do it, however is comfortable. You don't have to do it hard. It's just there's not enough weight for the uh, stamp to transfer onto your surface. Um, so look how perfect that is. By the end of this video, that it does not look like with the word sand anymore. <laughs> it just looks like, I don't even know what. So after every time I use my stamp, if I'm not gonna use it again, I wipe it off with a baby wipe. Uh, you can use a uh, paper towel and water. You could bring it to the sink in warm water and just rinse it off with a little bit of soap, whatever you gotta do. Um, but this, this seems to work. If you're using paint, I would, I would suggest to get it off immediately because if it dries on there, then it causes problems. It, it'll come off, but it'll take a little, a little scrubbing. So here's my retro. And what I do with these, um, the, newer, the newer masks are green. Um, I won't have that example in this video, which is nice because you can see them. These are very thin and they're very easily lost. Um, by marking them uh, also helps with placement on which way does which is the correct way for the mask to be. So we're just looking for S-A-N-D um, so we can cover up our words. But if you watch the other video on how to condition and prepare your stamps for the very first time, I show you in there before you pull your masks apart, 
how to go ahead and just stamp your masks, let them dry, and then pull them apart. It's really a great tip, and it'll save you trouble and time down the road. So again, this is a seashore stamp. The letter stamp is the retro. So I'm just kind of holding it over, trying to figure out which one I want to use and where I want to use it. So we're going to use that big guy. And that is a big stamp. This stamp has so much detail. I feel like this stamp and the unfortunately retired Fruitful Harvest are the two of the stamps that have the most detail. Um, the molds for the sea, I don't know if it's seashells or, I think this is called seashore and the mold is seashell. Um, even the mold has some amazing details in it. So that's a pretty big stamp there. So now we're gonna, um, we want, whatever you're gonna, whatever you want to stand out in the forefront, so you do have to think about this if you're gonna use masking. Whatever you want to stand out in the forefront is what you need to stamp first. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna protect this S, A, and D because we want that to stand out the most. We're basically building. And it's, if, if you didn't have the masks and you tried to stamp over them, all your ink and your stamps are gonna be all muddled together and it's gonna look terrible. So the masks just allow you to build and it makes it look more 3D and realistic. Now it is important when you're lining up your masks. Um, I learned this probably my first time. I didn't have, I just thought, oh, I just put the mask on there, no big deal. It's close enough and I stamped. Well, close enough doesn't count um, because it's not, it, if it happens, it's not a huge deal, but you'll, you'll see if you do it. Um, th the more coverage you can get with your stamp over your, um, your inked, surface the better just try to get it as close to the edges as you can so here's a piece of cut thin mount and there's a couple reasons why i recommend thin mounts the the um the stamps themselves are um what do you call it um what's the rubber i'm thinking of um <laughs> i can't think of the name um good lord uh not acrylic oh my gosh anyways it'll come to me but the stamps are like they're rubbery and when you go if you try to flip it over and you go to rub on it your fingers just drag instead of going nice and smooth across your stamp to get a nice image also you're you can pick it up if this didn't have a thin mount I'd have trouble picking up this stamp um, without getting ink all over my hands and taking ink off the stamp itself so I'm just gonna double check that my Normally, if you're doing this, you're not going to be moving things back and forth. I just had to do this because of the camera, so therefore I had to keep fixing them. Although I just saw someone use um, like a spray glue on their masks, and I think that's a great idea. I want to try that um, because they just put a little bit of like spray tacky glue and their masks never moved. So because they're very thin, they're very light, they're very movable. Another thing that I could advise is when like the stamp I just laid down. When you stamp over a mask, the stamp becomes slippery. So just be mindful of that. Take your time, put it down slow. Um, try not to, you know, when you anchor it, anchor it good and just take your time and do it because it does become a little slippery because that plastic underneath just wants to slip and slide with your ink. Nine out of 10 times when you lift up your, there we go, there's a close up. Nine out of 10 times when you lift up your stamp, your mask is gonna come with it. So if you lose it, check the back of your stamp. Yep, there they are set those aside because you're going to want to wipe the ink off of those or you're going to end up in ink with places you don't want check that out now it looks like the shell is behind the two letters that is so cool back in the day before these came with it um uh stockist would stamp a piece of cardboard or a thin piece of paper and cut them out by hand um, we still do that not every single stamp has the option for masks most of the new stamps come with masks and some of the older ones you can buy masks for a couple of bucks um, on the side. But if you need a mask and you don't have one, you can just stamp it and cut it out. Cut it out. <laughs> so again, we're not doing any uh, rhyme or reason here. I'm just trying to, I wanna show you how to build. So we've got the S-A-N-D masks and now I'm gonna mask the big shell as well. And, and of course it depends on what part of the your surface you're stamping on, um, what needs to be covered up. So. Don't think you have to cover up every single thing every time. It just depends on what corner you're working with and what it is you're exactly doing. Like I didn't need to fix those ends and all that because I'm coming where nowhere near nowhere near it. So 
this is a two page stamp. The seahorses in here are, everything is so good. So, such detail in these. And I don't think I used the seahorse. That's a shame. I think there's like three of them, three different sizes. Tons of starfish. I think we end up using the sand dollar. Yep, there we go. Oh, there's the seahorses. I think there's three of them. It's so good. <laughs> so good. I love it. Uh, another reason to have uh, extra thin mount is because when you wipe it down with your uh, baby wipe, you want to just set your stamp aside to dry before you smash it back in between the two pieces of plastic because you just want it to be dry. So you're going to need a couple extra pieces. I say two thin mounts because one you can cut up into different sizes and then the other one you can leave whole or cut in half because they're pretty big. I want to say they're 14 inches or something like that, but they're pretty good size. But the other one you can use to um, put paint on. If you have a brayer and you want to use paint with these, you can roll the paint out on the uh, thin mount and it'll wash right off um, or inks. So it has a lot of good reasons. Or if you're doing a big, you know, a couple of words and you need a big piece. So I recommend to start out with two, two thin, extra thin mounts. So I'm just making sure my mask is in place. So now this sand dollar is going to ultimately look like it's peeking up behind this big shell. I can't believe the details in that shell. It's hard to see on camera. I mean, it, it looks good on camera, but in person, it's like, holy smokes. So again, every time with your mask, just wipe off that ink that you just put on there because you're going to end up with ink uh, in places you don't want it. And look at that. It's so cool. And I clean these in between. I, I didn't think you needed to see that every single time. So I just showed you the first time, two times on how I clean my stamps, but I did clean them in between every single one here. I realize this video is a little slower, but it is a how-to and I didn't feel like it was, it, it, it would be worthy to speed it up too fast and you couldn't see what I'm doing. Um, it's basically the same process over and over again, um, but I thought I'd give you a few different uh, show you a few different things. Um, in the end, we do the other side real quick um, in just one big stamp and show you how that works. So ultimately decided on that fancy shell there. Again, make sure your thin mounts are debris free and they're not wet or it will fall off. Also, when you stamp your, your uh, stamps, try to be on a flat surface um, because you're gonna end up with ink in places you don't want it or you're gonna end up with ink, or no ink where you need it. That makes sense. Uh, and then just, if you get any on your thin mount or where you don't want it, just wipe it off with a paper towel. IOD ink is permanent ink, it's Indian ink. Um, a couple good reasons for that. Number one is when it does dry, if you go to put, um, say Mod Podge or DIY Patina or the Pentart mat over it, it will not smear. The ones that are not permanent will smear. Um, the other great thing is you can use these on fabric, let it dry overnight, heat set it with your iron on cotton setting for a couple minutes, and it's good to go. It'll wash and dry, and uh, it will, oh, it'll fade a little bit, but it's after several, 10, 10 washes or so, but it still stays true to its color. Um, so it's an overall great, great ink. Comes in all the primary colors, gray, white, um, well, it's a couple, two different blues, beautiful blues. Look how pretty that one is. I think it's called a lion something. So therefore it looks like it's in the background. So we're gonna go ahead and do one more and then we'll flip to the back just to show you how to do it in one big shot. And we use different colors so it really stands out more. Now you can take this as far as you want. You can just keep masking and layering, masking and layering. But what this just does is it allows you to build, it allows a nice clean picture and it, it allows it to look 3D. Um, it's, it's, it's just amazing what a little mask does. Like, who would have thought? Who would have thought? I always wondered how they did that. And now we know. It's getting better with every release. They learn something new and they implement something new for us. So again, just making sure my letters, I really want to try that tacky spray, but I guess it can't be too tacky. Like this is just shiny cardboard because um, I was just doing it for this video. But uh, if you're doing it on a piece of wood, I would imagine the little tacky stuff, it'd be totally fine. Um, the other thing I like about these retro letters is they're so, there's so much opening. They're great if you want to paint them or color them in or watercolors or whatever you want to do. Um, 
this this is a good stamp for that. This stamp has some serious details too. This would be cute on a beach bag. I don't even know why I chose the word sand. I just, I don't know. <laughs> I guess it wasn't wide enough for the word beach. And I'm not really sure. I, I feel like stamping is relaxing. You do have to think about it a little bit, but really you only have to think about what do you want to stand out in the forefront? And from there you just go. Just see where your creativity takes you. And with stamping, I mean, the worst case is you could paint over it. It's not that big of a deal. So we're just wiping off the excess paint on our masks. And I did speed it up and I did slow it down here and there where I thought was worthy, but I just didn't want you to miss anything. Um, I've had a lot of questions about stamping. All right, so this part I did speed up. I'm just going to show you. We're just going to use sand since we've already got it uh on the thin mount this is black ink and I'm going to show you how to do one big thing these look great on a shirt like this style right here where I'm doing makes a great t-shirt so again once you're down don't shift you're just going to make more of a mess if you shift a little bit just go with it just trust the process if it's a little blurred who cares it'll be fine um, anchor it with one hand touch every surface with the other and then lift up so I decided to use um China blue? No. Ocean's Deep. It's a turquoise. Oh, it's a beautiful color. Just so you could see the difference between um, between the two. So I hadn't used it in a while, so I'm going to show you real quick. Uh, I slow it down again. How to fill an ink pad. Because if you get a brand new ink, you're going to get an empty pad. Basically, just go back and forth. And if you're if you're doing fabric, you want to juice it up. Um, or if it's just been, you haven't used it in a while, you want to give it a little more, more ink. These inks last forever. I am still in my first bottle of black and it's at least half full. So just go back and forth and work it in there. Obviously, if it's an empty pad, you can really see where you filled it and where you need to. Um, but it does not take a lot. I'm more pushing it into the pad than I am squirting out. Um, just because it's such a highly pigmented uh, ink to begin with. Um, you don't need a lot just need enough for it to be you know juicy so this is the Le Corrier I love this stamp it's a French newspaper and all of those individual parts and strips and round things those are actually all individual stamps I just have not taken mine off I've so far I've used it every time as a whole a 12 by 12 hole like this um and I got ink where I didn't want it I think I was on my finger so yeah that stamp's pretty cool um that all those individual pieces come off if you want so we're going to put our mask back on. Be sure to visit our website at scrappiesrustics.com. I am an IOD stockist, so you can get all the materials that I've shown you here today. If you enjoyed this video and it inspired you, please like, share, and comment. To see more, follow me on Facebook and YouTube, and be sure to hit the notifications on both so you know when the new videos are uploaded. I'd love for you to uh, follow me on both. Look how cool that is, you guys. The D didn't stick to the mask. I'm, look at that. So it's like, bam. Really, really cool. Now it's shiny cardboard, so of course it's still wet. So there's the one side. How great would that be on a t-shirt? Clean as could be. Clean as a whistle. Guess you could cut the middle of the D out if you wanted to. And there's our other side. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.